it's a very natural and central instrument for us uh, songwriting. And it just had been uh, for a lot of performances. We, we try to allow each song to dictate what instrumentation will be ultimately. So it wasn't a question where we were going in and saying we're going to record a bunch of songs on piano. It was kind of like case by case scenario. Does this work? What works the best? But it's true, like Scott saying, Scott, Bob, and I all use the piano as a major tool for writing, for finding out harmonies. If something's confusing us, it's, it's kind of a, a, a main central piece for us to use like, throughout. And yeah, taking a step even further, our father wouldn't, they kind of said, if you want to learn guitar or anything else, you have to start the piano. So we started yeah. to start piano, uh, with piano lessons before we had an instrument. So it really goes to the beginning. So we went the process of learning how to play piano and then forgetting how to play piano. And then exactly. relearning. <laughs> and now we're slowly forgetting. Once again, we get worse and worse the more we play. Uh, speaking of your father, uh, he ran a welding business. Uh -huh. uh, what, what from his sort of hardworking entrepreneurial spirit do you think you brought into the band? The, uh, the entire organization of the Eight Brothers Incorporated is kind of funny because we, uh, the three of us started the company in 2001. We weren't in Nashville, we weren't in Los Angeles, we weren't in New York, we were in Concord, North Carolina. And we, uh, we figured people will come to us if we put a business together and just go at it like a construction company. So we incorporated our name, the Eight Brothers Incorporated, and thought nothing of uh, publicity or media at all and just started touring and playing shows. And uh, we were playing coffee shops and churches and bars and you know, all kinds of dives. And uh, we really depended and leaned on our work ethic way more than our ability. Because you know, if somebody wanted to do a little news show, a local news show, we were there at 6 a.m. and we'd be playing you know, the night before, wrapping up at 3 a.m. You know? So it, uh, it was something that uh, runs deep with us. Is, is a huge part. And like I said, maybe even more so than we're kind of trying to catch up with the talent, you know, bring the talent up to the work ethic uh, that had been still in us. But again, it's not like uh, we consciously studied our father's like, plan for business or anything like that. Just uh, a lot of how our parents taught us um, just, you know, went hand in hand with working hard. And uh, so I, a lot of that was sort of unspoken. Do you have any uh, crazy Bonnaroo stories? <laughs> crazy Bonnaroo stories? Bonnaroo. Well, the first time we played Bonnaroo was a, a great example of that work ethic, minus talent. Um, <laughs> we uh, just muscled our way through. It was in a tent, and it was uh, right after radio hit play. And uh, it, was, it was a really wild scenario and a wild scene. And, uh, um, we've had many of those shows since 2001 throughout where, you know, you just kind of look up in a daze, and it's a small room, you know, quarter of the size of this room and it's just beer and water sorry, beer and water and people and, and just this blur that happens. And uh, that only happens when you engage that work ethic to a point where it's just running like a machine. And it's really terrific to get to that point. Bonnaroo, uh, our introduction to Bonnaroo was exactly that. Uh, you know, whether that's crazy or not, and that's just another day at the office for yeah, us. For us generally <laughs> the crazy the craziness is on the stage and then we uh, we try to sort of get out of Don for uh, our own craziness really uh, hurts us or anything else. You know, we and, uh, stay busy. You know, we get in, we do our thing, we get out, we get on to the next thing. And we stop talking about our own craziness because we found it very tasteless. Yeah. <laughs> <We're boring laughs> and, and I, uh, when I ask people questions, a lot of times I ask them, you know, what do they miss on the road? And they always say, you know, they're family. You guys are together. So do you ever want to get away from each other? We get away from each other, yeah, a fair amount. We, uh, I think that's necessary for even your closest relationships like marriages. No, it's not Bob's in the 20s. That's right. Don't you hear the monotone? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tim Bowen and I no, we have boys. No, we love I have been on the road for 10 days. No, we, we, uh, we, we cherish our time apart and we see the value in it. And uh, we remember when we're together, even when we disagree, that um, nobody's going to look after uh, ourselves or each other like we are. So, you know, our dad told us that directly when we got born. And, um, you know, your dad usually knows a little more than you do about things like that. So we have to work for and we try to remind ourselves of that. So you guys played uh, at Coachella, and then a week later came back to Indio and played Stagecoach. That's right. You're about the only band I can imagine really doing both of those. Yeah. And what, what was the difference playing the same place with those two different weekends back to back? Hey, Bills. <laughs> yeah, hey, Bills. The, the, the roster was smaller. Uh, for stagecoach, uh, fewer bands, but uh, just 
an amazing like personality change. You know, they were both great, but it was just really, really sort of uh, bizarre and fun to watch. From you know one Saturday to the next Saturday, a whole like a whole set of grounds change personality. Uh, they were both really positive, both very friendly. But, uh, really, I mean, that may have been the only time I've ever experienced that where you've seen such a personality change of a festival in the exact same place. It was awesome. Why did you fellas say yes to playing Churchill Downs full of blue? Because they asked us. <laughs> we love saying yes. We uh, people invite us, and it's really difficult for us to find reasons to say no. We uh, we're honored to play anytime we, we get the chance, anytime we get the opportunity. We will we will slam our schedules full as we can. We will do as much as we can. And uh, the fact that they would invite us to, to such a, a nice place and such a big deal, uh, we jump at that. Plus, we play great. Oh man, can tell you, it's always been Among men, Louisville likes them both. Louisville's been yeah. great to us, and uh, so we, we see an opportunity to come back. We're not going to turn our nose up. Have, no. you, have you been to a Kentucky Derby? We have not. No. If you had a horse running in the Kentucky Derby, what would you name it? <laughs> and I probably like tested this question and had like a stock answer for it, and I've forgotten. I was thinking, uh, I don't know about Scott. Yeah, Scott, Scott has good. his Doberman that he's had for 10, 11 years. He's just a really I'm sweet dog. Just say, yeah. He's just a really sweet dog, and he's uh, like, it's funny with with uh, a dog that when, when they're really young goes to run, like it, maybe it's like just really freaked out all the time, and you sort of expect at some point for the dog to settle down, and had never settled down. Uh, so he's like a twelve year old dog with all kinds of gray gray hair all over his face and his nose and everything. And he's still just crazy, just like just freaking out all the time. So I like seeing him run. Uh, it's a lot similar between Hud and Dad. You know, we were the runs growing up. <laughs> Yeah. You both have this grass boundless energy that can be constructive. Huh? So I guess that is the answer A or B. Who are you uh, most excited to see today? Are you going to catch catch anybody? Oh, it sounds like we're going to possibly get to see Dwight Oakley. Oh, yeah. 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 And is Loretta Lynn? She is. Is she playing before him? Does anybody know? She's just guessing. Same time as us. Yeah, so those, those are two we might see if we, if we yeah. measure not. <laughs> we'll take whatever we can get to, you know, if anybody's playing anywhere within the side of it, we'll, you know, we'll check it out. So. You guys are known as musicians, musicians. What are the most obscure instruments any of you play? Bob is long trumpet. What else? I mean, we, we try to play anything we get our hands on uh, for, for a recording. Uh, when we go to the studio, we have uh, a number of instruments out, laid out. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll pretend to yeah. put any instrument around. Balalaika. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they don't get very obscure. I don't know. No. The banjo seemed very obscure when I started playing it uh, because we were in rock bands and it seemed like a strange alien instrument. Uh, and a lot of the kids that hung out around me, they, they were kind of like, what are you doing? You know, what is this? But it doesn't seem so alien anymore. What was it like being in the studio with Rick Rubin for the first couple of days as you were starting work on that? By then, it was, it was uh, a pretty natural progression because we'd already spent a fair amount of time with him. Uh, it started off with him inviting us to his home. Uh, so, really, that was like the initial moment like, oh, this is happening, or this is happening. Like, he actually is a fan. We are actually at his house, we're talking, all that. Uh, and we went back uh, many times to listen to demos and talk and have supper and all that. So, by the time we got in the studio, uh, a lot of that edge was taken off. Had, hadn't been there at all in the first place, but it was like, I mean, for us, I think it was a, a very quick um, calming, you know, because it was obvious there was a mutual respect right off. It wasn't like, you know, he doesn't really like uh, hover over you with, with all of his experience and um, respect and fame and all that, like all that sort of just sort of dissipates as soon as you meet him. It's, it becomes, he makes it very natural and it felt very natural right off. So. We got in the studio, uh, and I was pretty relaxed, maybe a little more relaxed than I should. I always uh, tell a story up right before we went in. Uh, my wife asked me as, as we were leaving, she's like, are you nervous? I'm like, a week before we lost the record, I'm not, I'm not nervous at all. I think I probably should have been a little more nervous uh, because we, we did dem demand more of ourselves on I Am Loving You than we had in the past. So, uh, it, was, it was definitely more demanding. But as far as uh, working with Rick, it was very natural. 